Failed fecal stool transplants, temporary fixed steroids, ineffective biologics, and experimental medications causing liver damage. That's the story of Arash, my latest patient to solve ulcerative colitis, inflammatory bowel disease, all naturally in under six weeks after joining my clinic and using the mind-gut immunity method. Lots of important lessons here. You're not gonna wanna miss this. Hi there, I'm Dr. Chanu Dasari, and I'm a surgeon who specializes in reversing gut microbiome dysfunction and autoimmune inflammation. My technique for reversing symptoms in as little as six weeks has helped thousands of patients over the years, and is called the Mind-Gut Immunity Method. And if you would like to learn more, visit mgiclinic.com and enroll in a free training. Now, in this upcoming video, you'll meet Arash, a fitness enthusiast and entrepreneur who saw his life turned upside down as a result of inflammatory bowel disease ulcerative colitis. Prior to enrolling my clinic, he searched for many experts, was evaluated at major top university hospitals, and even enrolled in clinical trials for experimental medications. He underwent a fecal microbiota stool transplant, but even after taking steroids and a whole host of immunomodulating medications over the years to try to reverse his illness, he was back to square one with a flare calling me. So let's dive in. Here you'll see me and Arash having a discussion over video conference about his progress at eight weeks into the program. At this point, he's totally symptom-free and off all his medications, and these results were achieved using the mind-gut immunity method, an approach that optimizes diet, digestion, sleep, stress, and exercise to achieve a healthy gut microbiome and reverse epigenetic triggers for inflammation. He not only managed to solve his ulcerative colitis and inflammatory bowel disease, but also gains substantial muscle in the process and is considering competing in an amateur bodybuilding physique fitness competition. So let's get started. All right, man, we're in week eight. How are you feeling? I'm doing good, dude. Better than week one, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Take me through, uh, you know, it's uh, we, we started working together about eight weeks ago. And I think at that time you were kind of struggling, right? Um, yeah. Um, right before week one, right before I called you, I think it was, um, I actually have the exact date. I went to, I went to Vegas for a conference over there. And, um, at this point I was in remission from a previous diet that I tried where I was doing fine. I was totally good. And once you get in that kind of mindset where you're like, I'm fine, I don't need to, I don't need to continue this diet. I've been doing good. You kind of just start eating anything you want, you know, especially when you're in Vegas, you're like, I got to get a beer. I got to get some drinks. I got to, you know, the yeah. worst things you could probably have for this condition. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I had them and then went back into a flare was super surprised. Cause I was in remission for a while. Um, then I would say for about like two and a half weeks, I started having my symptoms again, three weeks. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I messaged you, found you, uh, and then we started week one and I got better pretty quickly from it too. So that's great. I think week one, you told me that, uh, I, you were working with a gastroenterologist and there were, you were on, you were taking some steroids, right? Immunomodulating medication, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, when I went to the flare after, when I got back from Vegas and I realized I was going to a flare, um, I messaged my GI and I told him, um, and he obviously doesn't specialize in like doing, um, what we do, which is, you know, the diets and stuff like that. He was just, he's mostly just, here's some medication you need to take. I can approve it for you. Uh, so he put me on 40 milligrams of prednisone, wow. um, off the bat. Um, and I've actually been on higher than that. So that didn't seem like I've been on 80. For the you've been on 80. You, so yeah. you, you've yeah. taken 80 milligrams in the past. In the past. Yeah. I've been on 80, which is, um. I didn't know was, was ridiculous until some of the other doctors that I told, you know, and I see their facial reaction. They're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, so this was half. So I was like, okay, it's not as bad as it was before. It's still bad. Um, so yeah, I went on 40. Um, and how long, how long were you on that, on that dope, that 40 dose for a while? Uh, I'd, I'd say like eight, um, eight weeks. I was wow. on it. Okay. About. So yeah, by the time we started talking, I think I was on like 30 milligrams of prednisone at that point yeah, yeah, because yeah. I was tapering by five every week. Um, so, so yeah, it took about like eight weeks um, to get off of it. I, I would say around like 
uh, 20, I started seeing improvements so after like four weeks, um, which was like three weeks after being with you. And you said in the past, like when you dip down below the 20 milligram dose, that's when you started seeing problems in the past. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> the first thing that I feel like every doctor puts you on immediately when you get diagnosed with ulcerative and you have symptoms is prednisone. And so <laughs> in, a, in a flare, there's, there's actually plenty of, there's actually a, like a whole host of these like immunomodulating medications. Like Eucerus and stuff. Yeah. There's all these brands. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're coming out with new ones all the time. Um, and so yeah, I, kind of go into uh, what I guess, yeah, give me, give us a little bit of background. Cause some people are just like tuning in and seeing this all for the first time. Um, take us through kind of what your journey was with inflammatory bowel disease. Like when it started, you know, how long ago you were diagnosed, what that experience was like. Yeah. Um, so I was, so I was like always into sports my entire life, basically. Um, since I was like young and I think around like 20, uh, I think it was 20. Yeah. 20. When I turned 20, um, I used to always have a lot of problems with constipation, but it never was anything like serious or anything, uh, like to this extent with symptoms. Um, and I decided that my, one day my colon kind of just started hurting. I don't know why, what it was. Um, I think what happened was since I was trying to bulk up, um, I, I was in, I believe, no, this is after. So this is a little bit after high school when I was, when I was in college, um, I started trying to bulk up with these crazy shakes. Like I was mixing ton of oatmeal, bananas, peanut butter, milk, um, uh, like creatine, like four scoops of protein, like the whey protein powder. Uh, and it was working. I, I was working for a while. You got, like, ripped. Was, you got ripped. I do. Well, I got a lot of muscle. I got chubby. <laughs> so I was trying to bulk. It kind of worked. I hit like 175. Right. Like I was yeah. feeling good about myself. And I remember, dude, like my body would like reject these. So, um, so yeah, like I was, I was drinking these things at night every day I'd get back. So it was like a constant thing, um, which probably contributed to the constipation from like the amount of oatmeal and this like bulk of like a shake I was eating. Um, and so I, one day just started having like colon problems, some symptoms. And my parents were just like, well, if you're having these problems, like we have a GI, um, we could take you to our GI, like a family GI that we've had. Um, you can do a colonoscopy, check it out right? See what yeah. it is. Yeah. So yeah. went in, um, he did a colonoscopy. Um, and he was like, turns out you have ulcerative colitis. We obviously wow. didn't know what ulcerative colitis was at the time. Um, so you're like Googling this, right? When you're 20 years old, or trying to figure out what ulcerative. Well, colitis. <laughs> the thing was, luckily my entire family has never had any, any medical problems, right? We've always been totally in the clear. We we're always really healthy people. I thought we used to eat pretty healthy and relatively compared to everyone else we did still get healthy but there's you know as i'm learning there's things here and there that seem healthy but actually aren't you know for you um and and so what happened was when we heard the diagnosis we're like oh i can't be that bad like it it couldn't be anything serious right and so then the doctor and we told we asked the doctor i'm like well what do we need to do like what should we start doing today Mm -hmm. he's like oh nothing it's you're good you don't need to do anything um has nothing to do with diet um, you're nothing yeah, to do with stress, nothing to do with exercise, nothing put to do me with on food. the complete opposite path of where I like from the beginning. Right. So, um, this happens a lot, by the way, this is like, this happens a lot. I yeah. Guess. Yeah. And people every day where this, this is what happens, you know, there's no conversation about what caused the inflammatory bowel. Right. Yeah. They're like, it's, it's the same thing every time they're like, it's genetics. You get it at this age and there's nothing else you can do about it. And you're going to be stuck with it. Um, my doctor told me that you're going to be stuck with it. It's going to get worse eventually. And then you're going to get your colon removed. And that's the end of it. Wow. Straight told me like that. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, I was like, I was an athlete. Like I was working out. Like I was in all these I sports. I was like wrestling. You. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was like, how is this possible? I was like, nothing. I was like, well, I'm not doing anything different. I was like, I eat relatively healthy. I've seen people that eat way more unhealthy than I did and yeah. they're totally fine. And so then that day when he told me that there was nothing wrong, I didn't need to, um, I didn't need to change my diet. Nothing was nothing. It had nothing to do with diet. Uh, we went out and ate pizza full <laughs> large. I remember vividly. We went out, ate pizza, um, told my mom, I was like, well, the doctor said, this is a doctor that you guys recommended. You know, there's no, 
there's yeah. no problems. He said that I can eat whatever I want. And I was in the mindset of like bulking already. So I was like, I was like medical problem, whatever. I'm trying to gain size. <laughs> Just <laughs> terrible thought. I was 20 year old. So like, um, I didn't stop my shakes didn't say, until it started getting worse. And then it got worse and then it got worse. And then, um, I think like nine months probably after, um, we met, we went to a different doctor because we were like, well, this doctor clearly isn't going to do anything different for us. Yeah. Um, so you kind of like, you kind of did a little bit of doctor shopping at that point. Yeah, we were like, Let, let's let's go look at what other GIs have to say. Like, let's see if they have um, any other ideas of you know what this possibly could be, or if there's any other medications. If that's the only thing I can do at the time, mm-hmm. um, then maybe I can take something different. So, went to another doctor. Um, gave us gave us. Uh, we, we start small, usually with like this condition, you start with like the, uh, the pill form, like Eucerus or the, uh, yeah. like the enemas or like these, uh, steroid, um, yeah, enemas, misalamine, take, steroid, salamine. Yeah. Um, it turns out I'm allergic to misalamine. Wow. And I'm super rare, but I've taken it like four different occasions because doctors never believe me and it always gets worse yeah. right after I take it. My symptoms would get like incredibly worse and they'd be like, okay, well, I guess you're allergic to it. Um, took misalamine, misalamine did nothing, you know, um, or that was the misalamine that I was allergic to. Eucerus did nothing. Um, so then we were, and I think we took a couple other, uh, ones that were like a little bit less than biologics, like yeah. the level down from biologics. I can't remember what they were, um, didn't work. So we we're like, okay, well, we've exhausted all of our options with this doctor. Let's go look at another doctor. Went to another doctor in LA that was kind of better. He was in the field of researching. Um, yeah. and he was researching, uh, cannabis and uh, yeah. So he was researching the THC in it. Um, yeah. to which I like, I, I'm, I like more of the terpenes rather than the THC, I mean, right? The flavors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then he told me, um, and dude, coming from a middle Eastern family, that's the last thing your mom would want to hear. Like my son <laughs> going and smoking some weed. Um, but at that point, dude, I was, I was really skinny. I lost all my weight. My self, my self-confidence was gone, dude. I like all the weight that I gained over like my athletic years, all gone. I was skinny. Um, I wonder you, if I can show you really, me. yeah. Show me. So you were really sick at this time. I was dude. I was, sk- the problem was that, um, we don't like medication. So we really didn't want to get onto these biologics. Right. So was there any discussion? So you, you'd been seeing all these doctors and was there any, and you you tried all these like medications and everybody basically said it was kind of hopeless. And so, but in your, in the back of your mind, you're always like, there's gotta be something, there's gotta be something. Right. Um, Was there ever a conversation with um, some of these medical professionals about like the causes of ulcerative colitis beyond just blaming genetics was there any conversations about say the gut microbiome or uh you know we did mention some food but how about like nutritional deficiencies sleep stress exercise any of those um sleep definitely exercise was kind of variable because i've had some doctors that were like don't put pressure on your colon by working out Mm -hmm. some doctors were like you should work out I was always under the impression if you keep your body moving, then you keep the system moving and you keep the system. So I I always force myself to do something, even if I was at like my weakest, um, because I thought that if you stop, then your body's going to stop and then your mind's going to, it's just going to like spiral. So if you could like keep it up. Um, And so they would tell me sleep was good. They wouldn't ever tell me about the microbiome until I went to the doctor before you. Um, But they pretty much would tell me that sometimes people are able to control their symptoms, sometimes with food here and there, but no one knew exactly what to eat. Like some people would be like, Oh, like if you cut out wheat, I get like, I got way better. Or I, I cut, wow. it was like, it wasn't, it wasn't uh concise or it wasn't like a, it wasn't a holistic type plan, like a comprehensive plan. It was just kind of like you were hearing these like one-off yeah. little recommendations and it was exactly. Very- it sounds exactly. like the advice you got was a little bit inconsistent too between person. Dude, and super over the place. I was all over the place. Like, I, you know, from the beginning of being put on the completely the opposite trajectory of like, I'm going to get my colon removed eventually. I yeah. even had um, like a specialist, like, uh, I don't want to say his name, a very renowned uh, GI doctor that walked in um, that we went to that, like we had connections to actually be able to go talk to. And he's like, oh, I'm, 
I, I've been in this field um, for my entire career. It has nothing to do with food. Um, it's it's all what do you say? It's all genetics. And you're gonna get your colon removed. He also says this is a second doctor that told me you're gonna get your colon removed, and you got to go on biologics. I mean, you and, you know, I'm a surgeon, right? I act, yeah. I, I remove colons for a living. I remove intestinal right. organs for a living, and I'm like. I hear this all the time because yeah. I'm always the guy that like, you know, when people come to my office, they've like, like you, they've already been seen by like three, four five different other doctors at the time. So I'm always like the, the fifth, sixth opinion. And I've got to like pour over all these medical records and figure out what, what did they do? Right. What did they do wrong? And you know, like in hundred percent of cases, like even in your case, right. Remember when we, so when we did that intake assessment, I was like asking super detailed questions about like every little thing you were doing on a daily basis. Mm. It's like nobody takes the time, nobody takes the time to sit there and analyze and figure out well, what the heck is actually going on and what's going like what's going wrong. And so, you know, by the time they get to me, they've already failed all these other medications. They're they've already kind of lost faith in these doctors, you know. And so I'm right. used, I'm sort of used to this thing too. And I think I think I've shared with you my own struggles with autoimmune and inflammatory bowel. It was the same case for me when I was in medical school. I was going through the same thing. And, you know, I had to take matters into my own hands, kind of like you did, and try to, you know, look for better answers. Right. Um, tell me a little bit, you know, something that was really interesting when we did our intake assessment was that you actually had a fecal microbiota transplant, and that's basically a stool transplant, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Tell us a little bit about what that journey was like. And obviously it didn't end up working out for you because uh, you, you had a different issue pop up like, you know, down yeah. the road. But um, yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, so that was the doctor before you that uh, I was with. Um, she she was kind of the person that put us on the track of there might be something with the microbiome that mm -hmm. could uh, potentially affect the you know, your symptoms. Um, I, that was the place where I started taking, I was taking like experimental drugs. Um, <laughs> I was on, um, I was on a couple of different things at the time. Wow. So, so, uh, yeah, one of them, I don't know. It doesn't matter if I say the drug, I don't know if you, yeah, you, you can mention it was, names. it was, uh, I am you eight, three, eight. I don't know if you've ever, it's a weird name for it. I don't know if that's the actual name that they're going to go with, but um, yeah, so I was with, I was, I was with that and it was supposed to be like a pill form of biologic, the same strength of, um, the other ones. I didn't even talk about the biologics that I've been on. Um, and so when we kind of started realizing that it was the microbiome, we started looking into, um, we started researching, right. And we started getting a lot of information from her and, uh, we found about like the FMTs basically what happened was that we realized the only way that I can get an FMT was if you had C. diff. That was the only thing that it was approved for at the time from what I C. remember. Diff, C. diff colitis, right? That's, C. diff, correct. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a special type of colitis that's infectious, right? It's, it's caused by C. difficile, which is a bacterium. And I, I think the microbiota transplants were only approved for that indication at the time, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. So they... um. So the only thing I was able to take it for was for that. But the thing is, um, which I didn't know. So I, I got C. diff. So I would do frequent tests um, on myself or not on my, the doctor would give me tests to go do, um, you know, stool, uh, stool tests. And she, and I was, you know, extremely fatigued. I was anemic, everything, you know, I was, cause we were looking for like a solution at the time and we didn't want to take any medication again. Cause I've been through so many and I was still not getting any better. Um, and so I was on, I told you also, okay. So, so what happened? So pretty much right when I got the stool test done, it came back a C diff, which we were kind of happy about, which is weird to like be like, oh, I'm happy that I have C diff. But we were like, you're kind of like, <laughs> at least it's not an autoimmune problem, right? Yeah, I, I was like, yeah. I, I was like, it can't be any worse than what I, than what what I already had. Yeah, what you were going through, right? Yeah. Exactly. So we got really happy. We were like, oh, well, this is perfect. I can get an FMT. And I thought like, this is like the cure to, to like potentially our problem. Because I've heard that some people, um, there's one specific person. I don't want to mention his name. He's in Australia. You might've heard of him. He's a doctor in Australia that he does FMTs and he's like a specialist and they approve FMTs for people with ulcerative colitis and Crohn's. Yeah. Um, and he has a lot of cases, um, 
that he's been able to cure. So like in my mind, I was like, oh, this is perfect. Like he even has a YouTube and he talks about it. Um, By the way, we were able to do that together without any kind of. I know it was it was so much easier, right? It was it was way easier. It was was, yeah. Just keep going. I don't I don't want people to think, oh, my God, I got to get a a stool transplant. Right. It's so much because it didn't work. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, and it's so, and it's also so much easier to reset your bio microbiome. It's not like you gotta go do something that made. But yeah, walk us through that process. So like, how how do you get what 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 is that process like? Like getting a stool transplant? Do, do, <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's weird. Um, it's weird to think about it, right? But I mean, when you're in that when you, when you're in that when you're at that point where like you're at your lowest, where you're like in pain all the time you're like dude i'm willing to do anything i do not care like whatever it is like uh, if it works it works if it doesn't like i was you know you're you're open to everything at that point you don't even care if it's gross or whatnot if there's a chance that it might work even like a five percent when you're there you're like dude i'm down to do whatever um so i did it um with the doctor um and did he give you the pills or did he do do it from below? There's two ways. They did it, they did it below with the, uh, oh, no. uh, with the, with the insemination, th- with the, uh, whatever the squirt thing is. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they have to make like that whole slurry and everything with it. Oh, yeah. Man. Okay. Um, but it, uh, it was, it was an interesting experience. I actually wasn't even able to do the FMT until I went through like three courses of like antibiotics and stuff like that before I could even get to that point. Oh, so wow. like that so was, a f- high do- they gave you some pretty high dose antibiotics to start. Yeah, they, they gave me flagell. They gave me, um, Oh shoot. What was the other one? There's two other ones, I believe. Yeah. Um, and then, and then they also did the bowel prep, right. To try to get rid yeah. of every, yeah. So that, yeah. It sound, I mean, it sounds like that's a pretty intense process. I mean, yeah, it was, it was difficult. Easy. It's, Especially when you're already malnourished at that time. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty intense getting at that point. And then, um, so yeah, we took the, we did the FMT, um, thought it was working, probably was a placebo because it didn't work. And then um, after that point, it kind of just started getting worse. And then I went on to that experimental drug that I was talking about after that, the biologic, until, um, my liver enzymes started suddenly going through the roof for no reason. Oh, wow. I didn't know what it was from. So you had liver toxicity potentially from the experimental drug you were on? Potentially. Um, I guess they don't, yeah, not for sure, but. Yeah. And then, and then, so then I had to get off of the experimental drug, obviously. Right. Cause you know, um, and then what happened was I was like, okay, well, my liver enzymes went back to normal. They were like, yeah, but now you can't get back onto it. They're like, you're not allowed to get back. And I'm like, okay, well now I don't have, any other option. option i was like what so then i was at that point where i was like dude i've literally exhausted everything i could possibly do i was like there's i've yeah. done every job i've done it you know so Con- I consulted like, with world experts yeah point. i was like dude if i was like if i don't figure something out like that's dude my colon's gonna be gone i was like that's literally it i'm at the point where i'm like there's nothing else i can possibly do i was like let me let me go onto a diet i was like let me figure out like some crazy diet i was like i don't care if it's like eat one acorn a day i was like i'll do it i was like uh so i went on you took matters into your own hands pretty much because i was like dude medical science can't do anything further for me i was like what else am i supposed to do because if if my only option is getting my colon removed let me try everything i possibly can do before i get to that point and when Um, was when was all this this was like years ago right this was like a year ago with oh, the, uh, okay, okay. like when I got off of that experimental drug about like a year, a year and a half ago. So the diet worked out a little, worked out a little bit, right? It, it, yeah. So I got into like fermented foods and stuff like that. Um, and that kind of worked, um, for about like six, seven months that worked for me Yeah. until, <clears throat> until I started trying to expand my diet into eating other things. And then I, the, which leads up to the time where I was talking about where I went to Vegas and up until that point, up until that point, I was actually doing a little bit better. Um, and, and then I got a phone call. <laughs> and then you got a fo- and then you got a phone call three <laughs> three weeks after that. And I was like, "Yo, uh, I I'm flaring. Uh, I've done this once, but I need I need something that's like actually proven and like it's it's way more tailored and it's way more until and yours your diet's way more tailored and way more specific and it makes way more sense. I was kind of doing it. I kind of got lucky to be honest, if you, if you really were to think about like what my diet was before, um, it was kind of there. Um, but 
I would say yours is like more consistent and more, um, more of the, cause your, di- your diet got me into remission way quicker than my first diet did. Yeah. And diet's so. only one part of it, man. I mean, you're, we also like for, you know, we were just mentioning the microbiome. We, we spent the first week or two of this whole of us working together, resetting the microbiome. Like, you know, that's such an important part because that FMT, uh, unfortunately didn't, didn't do that. Right? right. And the, and the ideal situation would be like, yeah, you have a really nice microbiome that, that is anti-inflammatory as opposed to pro-inflammatory. And I think that's kind of like the edge that we have is that now, nowadays we have such specific probiotic strains, some of which would even have studies and patents around them. And we're able to leverage that knowledge now to be able to reset the microbiome in a very effortless way. I mean, we're not talking about a crazy stool transplant. We're just talking about taking probiotics, eating a diet that supports those probiotics. And then, and then really just, you know, you were also very good about exercising throughout this whole period of time, managing your stress, manage and getting good sleep. And, you know, there was a lot of, there was a lot of work on your part. It wasn't just, you know, (laughs) wasn't just hard. Yeah. It wasn't (laughs) just worth it. Yeah, I know. I, I don't want to sugarcoat it. It's not like the, you know, the first month, like we're on what we we're on the phone, like every week, like yeah. multiple times a week, trying yeah, to like, you know, going back and <laughs> forth and being like, okay, well, what's working, what's not. And there were some times in there you, you had your doubts too, right? Oh, I definitely <laughs> did. Yeah. Well, it's difficult when you still have the pain going on. It's like, it changes the way you think. And then, and then you have like the PTSD of everything you went through. I know uh, I'm sure a yeah, lot of be, people... being sick for so long, first of all, and then like, you know, you, you already have this mistrust of the medical profession, right? It just right. sort of let, lets you down. And um, I, I understand that. And you're still, you're still coming out of that. Like that, that kind of medical trauma you went through, it's, it's going to be something you're, you're going to have to. Oh, probably... I definitely, I definitely have PTSD from it. And I know other people that have been going through the same thing, definitely have some PTSD. Cause the second I started having that second flare dude, your body just starts, it's weird. It's like a weird feeling that I haven't had before, but that was, so then I was like, oh dude, I must have medical trauma. I must have like PTSD from it. Cause it's, it's, it's a hard thing to deal with. It's a thing, man. When um, it just, it, it really weighs on you. It makes anxiety real, makes depression real. It affects your yeah. relationships. It affects all kinds of stuff. And, you know, I think the biggest part of it is you don't have answers and you don't have like a, like some kind of hope or outlook as to how this is going to be fixed. And when that happens, and when you're in that zone, when you're like, things are falling apart and I don't know how to fix them, that, that is a, that's not a good place to be. And like, that's kind of where you were when you called me, right? I mean, it's almost like, you were just like, I'm I'm just going to see, you know, if the mind gut immunity method will work for me kind of deal. And we kind of had a chat, we did an intake assessment and, you know, started working together. Right. (laughs) Definitely. Yeah. No. And I got to the point where luckily I believe that a diet was the solution to, you know, the problem. And, um, I don't know if in the beginning, if it was like the very beginning, when I got diagnosed with somebody, if like you were to come out and tell me like, Hey, I think you could fix this with this diet. I don't know if I would have listened if I didn't go through everything I did. So but even, even when you had the diet, how many times were you calling me and texting me and going back and forth about like, you know, what about this? What about this? Or how do oh, I with the di- integrate? It's, this? it's like, it's yeah. more than just like a piece of paper, right? I mean, like it's a whole like it's, system, right? It is a whole system. It's, um, it's hard because in the beginning, I think coming off of a diet where, I, well, not coming off of, cause I was kind of on a diet before I was kind of expanding, but I was eating I was definitely eating processed foods again, which is not a good thing, but I was eating like sugar yeah. and going to like a diet where it's like no sugar. I like felt that dip and the crash and then you get extremely tired and it's even harder because you're having symptoms. Right. It's, it's a difficult thing to get through. It's, it's really hard. And like you said, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but um, it's, it's worth it at the end. It just takes a while. Like yeah. anything, it takes time. Cause now, now you're in week eight, right? And right. you've been, ba- you're, you're symptom free right? Yep. Your, your energy levels are way, way up. I think we spoke just like a week or two ago, right? right. You're off, you're off prednisone. You, you have no symptoms. Uh, you're ripped now, right? Like sounds like you got, <laughs> you're totally ripped, like muscle wise. I got, I dude, I gained, um, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm like 160, uh, like 163 now. And I was at like 130, <laughs> like when I was in my flare and everything. I was, yeah. 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 So uh, luckily, yeah. Yeah. And this diet, dude, this diet makes you like stay ripped. You stay lean because like all you're eating is 
the leanest things you could possibly you're on like a bodybuilder diet constantly <laughs> well there there's also so the it's a phytonutrient diet right true so yeah it um the the reason it works is because the number one deficiencies in people are not fats are they're not carbs they're not protein they are micronutrients right, right. so with, we're talking about vitamins minerals and phytonutrients and phytonutrients as you know include things like polyphenols terpenes you know, all of these things that you can only find in very specific superfoods, right? So to in, in order to increase that in the diet and do it in a way that sort of makes sense, like for you, it, you know, we had to count all the carbs and fats and proteins just to make sure you saw those results too. But right. um, yeah, I think that's what really sets it apart. It's, it, I mean, it's based on data. It's based on what, you know, I mean, there's just thousands of papers on, on these topics. And so I kind of try to put that all together in something that's easy to digest <laughs> so to speak and but there's still coach I mean there's still like back and forth man like just you know I introduced the whole thing and you know you sat through all the videos in the academy right I mean there's almost 15 of those videos talking about gut health how to detox your liver phytonutrients genetics you know all kinds of stuff the phyto diet and you know, sleep, stress, exercise, there's even exercise regimens. And for, you know, some of our, uh, some of the people that are uh, watching this, um, they, they don't, they, they don't really know what the whole program is all about. And so I, maybe you can tell them kind of what, uh, what the most challenging things were, uh, what to look out for, what the most surprising thing, maybe is some things that you, that you learned. And then uh, maybe even go into, uh, you know, there's a lot of videos that you go through to learn a bunch of this stuff. And so, um, you know, do you feel like you've gotten some kind of uh, like some valuable knowledge to where maybe the next time you don't, you don't need a doctor to try to fix this issue. And maybe there will never be a next time, you know? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Um, I think the thing that surprised me the most, most was the five channels of inflammation mm -hmm. that I learned from you. Um, and salt being the uh, one that I never even thought about. about before even yeah. talking to you, um, which leads into the hardest thing about the, <laughs> the diet, which is, uh, the lack of taste personally, yeah. um, which totally makes sense because you, you know, taste is something I feel like that we've, well, you get, there's still spices. It's just, it's low. True. On, it's low on salt for a reason, right? <laughs> True. I love salt. Yeah, no, it is. But, and I love salt, dude. I like, I take salty things all the time. I love, <laughs> I love salty food. Um, so that's probably just like a more of a preference kind of thing. Um, some people might not like it. So some people might be like, Oh, this is perfect. Like they can do it. Yeah. Um, but for me, yeah, for me personally, um, it was just in the beginning getting past that, like, uh, no taste barrier. Um, mm -hmm. And having those cravings, the cravings kind of just start getting a little bit harder in the beginning because you're like, well, I want some it takes sweet. about three weeks, right? Like the right. sugar cravings, the salt cravings to kind of come down, right? Yeah. So I would, yeah, I, I see that too. Like, I, you know, I work with like hundreds of clients, thousands of clients at this point, but that first three weeks is always challenging, right? It's yeah. Just, um, because, you know, you just, you're sort of used to having all these things in the diet and, uh, yeah. you know. But the good thing about it was that I got really lean. Um, I I lost a good amount of water weight. So if people are trying to lose weight um, on the diet, um, it definitely helps. You can helps also with that gain too. weight on the diet. And you can gain that. weight. <laughs> I, I'm, I was gaining weight um, because of the amount I was eating. But some people don't have to eat as much as I was eating. Um, uh, and so, yeah, it's um, it's a good diet. It's uh, The shakes really help. You yeah. know, in the beginning, um, they're beginning super, the they're filled with phytonutrients, man. And so, and you can make them yourself. You don't have, you don't need any special ingredients. You just go to the grocery store and get all this stuff. It's, it's yeah. great, you know, exactly. Yeah. Um, and, uh, it, it kind of reminds me of a diet where you don't get a cheat meal. Like, uh, you know, like you, they put you on it. <laughs> I haven't, but... well, we're only eight weeks in. I haven't actually, we haven't discussed, True. I haven't, I haven't, True. Taught, I haven't taught you how to cheat yet <laughs> true true and we're getting to that point you did you did say that we will get to that point yeah. and um but i do i do not even care i would take all of that for all of my symptoms being gone it's totally worth it like yeah. i said like, like now I said, you have your health right You're, you yeah, have your health it's way more important and everything's back on track right yeah like i like i said uh, before i even start i would eat an acorn a day if i could <laughs> if that would have cured my symptoms, i would have been fine with doing that um the hardest thing I would say about being on a diet is uh, the social aspect. Before I got this condition, I never realized how how much intertwined we are like with food, food and drink, and 
and it is so be. hard yeah. yeah it's hard dating people it's like going out on dates and i'm sure some of the guys or girls out there <laughs> i mean let's think about it bro it's like you 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 try to go on a date with a girl for like the first time you want to take him out somewhere you're like I, like there's you're on this diet like what are you gonna do <laughs> so and for the first day it's like the easiest thing to go out you guys get hungry you go you know you want to get some froyo you want to get some you want to get something but you can't and then you don't want to be on the first day explaining why you can't eat you know so it's like so it's difficult i get it some people are probably out there <laughs> thinking the exact same way um well here's the other here's the thing you you just got over this whole thing right, right. everything is just getting better right i will say this having you know personally dealt with this problem in my own life they're they're go, when you're in the pro inflammatory state you, when you're just coming out of it you kind of want to stay on track right yeah. But as you've gone on with time, right? Like, let's say it's been a few months, been a few years, right? Your ability to quote unquote cheat or basically eat whatever you want. Like I eat whatever I want now. I'm right. not like, I'm not super strict anymore, right? But there were years of time where I had to be super strict, right? Mm -hmm. And once I figured out like, hey, it's not just a diet. It's like, I can now reset, uh, you know, I, I have a healthy microbiome now, which is mm -hmm. very important. My sleep, my stress, my exercise is like pretty good, right? So then when it comes to the diet, I, I'm, I, you know, I, I already told you, I, the next thing we're going to be talking about, the next thing we're going to be talking about is how you can eat that froyo, how you can yeah. you know, eat that dinner and how you can not worry so much. Like, is this going to lead to my next flare? Right. Because mm -hmm. you have PTSD, right? You're just thinking yeah. like every food that comes into my mouth, like, I don't know what it's going to do. Is it going to cause me to have abdominal pain, you know? Yeah. And so exactly. I totally understand. I understand that process. And I think like some of the work we're probably going to be doing um, from here forward, moving forward is trying to restore like kind of a more normal balance to your life. I think that that's kind of something we're going to be focused. Yeah, on. that'd definitely be cool. And I know we can always do another Zoom call. Yeah, on, yeah. And we'll get I, another update. <laughs> yeah, an update on. And I've also taken videos um, of of from day one of uh, doing this diet up until oh, great yeah so i've been taking videos so i'm like this is week one on the uh, diet this is how i feel i you know how do i feel i feel good i feel whatever and then all you've also seen that whole list that i have of, of everything i've been eating every day that's great yeah um, the food diaries are huge because you know every now and then I'll, I'll meet someone that i work with that has a food intolerance to something super specific and mm -hmm. you don't know what it is because allergies are rampant and they can manifest at any time right and so every now and then I'll find some something strange about individuals and then we'll, we'll go into and like explore that further. Thankfully for you, that was not the case. We we actually did pretty good. But yeah, that's why the food diaries are super. You got to track it, right? You got to track right. everything. Um, yeah. And that's part of why this this program is very intense. It's not like, you know, you just sit around and I, I'll see you when I see you kind of deal. It's like, either yeah, no. you're, you're bothering me or I'm bothering you like every it's, two days, or every week. It's so. definitely intense. It's something that, I mean, to be honest, it's, it's, it's a, it's a pretty intense condition too. It's not something to be taken lightly for, um, you know, some of the people that are in, if it takes, if it takes those strong biologics to give some people remission, I would yeah. imagine that it would be something difficult to put into remission, even if it is holistic, like a diet too. So, um, but it's worth it. You know, like I always said, health is the most important thing and it's worth it. And getting your colon removed is not something that people should want to do. And you know yourself and you always yeah. try to prevent it. Yeah. As I mean, as, I, can. as much as I, you know, I'm a surgeon, I make a living off of, of removing, off of removing things. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is a little bit bad for business, but you know, here's the thing, like, this is something I went through myself and it was, I, you know, this is why I have such a strong interest in this. And, you know, when I, when I take on clients, it's, it's like, I'm taking on somebody like, it's like, I'm taking on a friend, you know? So right. I'm talking to them. I'm making sure that they see the results that they want to see. I think when we first chatted, I said, you know, you'll see maybe like, you know, the, the you know, we'll try to get 50 to 80% resolution. Did and I think, you call, I think you <laughs> called me like on week four or five, you're like, I'm, I'm doing great. I don't think yeah, I, I, have any, <laughs> I was like, great so we got a hundred percent resolution in four weeks and I was yeah like, i know way <laughs> <laughs> really fast yeah, yeah i know and this is somebody that's been like had a you know you've had a fecal transplant you've oh. been diets you've been through world experts you've been on biologics i mean i mean you've had this since you were 20 right i mean so this isn't something this isn't yeah. like a mild case right i mean so 
that's the yeah. power that's the power i think of like you know having a very whole like a like a complete comprehensive approach yeah and if, if other people want to know what i on the biologics i was on i i um i the first one was in tivio i did do in tivio um so if anyone else has been on tivio that worked for like a little bit and then i think my body created antibodies to it and it completely just uh got rid of it and didn't work anymore and i did humera too um and the next one i was going to do was remicade uh remicade yeah, yeah. remicade um or uh the uh, stellara those were the two oh. options that i had those are the only other two medications that i never took out of all the other medications i took and that was the next one that was literally the one that i was gonna have to try and i could probably tell you it probably wouldn't have worked because none of the other ones ever worked for me but i know it's, it's different. also it's also frustrating right like you have this you have this illness like you were totally healthy nothing wrong with you right in your teenage years you have this thing pop up out of the blue and um and your only option at that point is to take a pill it's like it's crazy right i mean and to think like had you gone down that path or like you, you just would have you it just would have been more and more frustration you, you would have probably still been sick you know, hating the world. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. If, if it would have kept getting to that point, I don't even, I don't, yeah, it was, it was difficult. I mean, going from like 20 to like suddenly dropping all your weight, it was completely like your life changes, but, um, you know, you, you learn things. It develops you as a person, develops your character. Um, yeah. I'm definitely stronger because of it, because it's funny when, when, especially like a problem or condition like this, um, when you have friends, you know, when they said like your homies and stuff like that, they uh, always give you like little jokes and stuff like that. So like when I would tell them, dude, I got a colonoscopy and be like, bro, you had a camera up your butt. Like they'll make fun of me and stuff. <laughs> and it's funny. You start laughing about it. Cause it's, at least it's something to laugh about. You, you had uh, someone else's poop put up there too. Yeah. Bro, I mean, <laughs> I know exactly. And so, so, so like, um, it's, it's difficult, but, um, I think there's always, there's always a solution. It, it's just yeah. all about a mindset. It's all mindset. It's how it is a mindset shift. And definitely. I think you were smart enough or at least impatient enough to just try to see if there was other solutions. There's another way. And that's really what I, you know, what this whole channel is about is to try to provide people with enough knowledge and enough skill set to try to do this on their own. And, you know, like people can work with me directly if they want to try to fix these problems. But I'm also trying to like de deliver a lot of value in terms of like what people know about the condition, especially the root causes, addressing these root causes in a very smart way, instead of just, you know, just leaving it to chance or just saying like, oh, none of this really works. I'm going to take a pill. But, you know, as you know, that that doesn't always work. And you know what? Surgery doesn't always work either. You know? Right. Yeah. So here we are. You know, it's um, I'm I'm a surgeon who has had autoimmune disease and has had inflammatory bowel disease, and you know, here I am trying to advise patients. Like we, I think we can, you know, we can do something about all this. Yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, hopefully, hopefully, some other people uh can take from my experience because um you know, going through every single drug. I'm sure some of the other people have gone through similar yeah. medications that I have. Uh, so I think I mean, your journey, I think sharing your journey with others is, is very important. And I'm, I'm just really happy that you were able to, to go into some really specific things here today. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I hope, uh, you know, I hope uh, the other people, cause I remember the way I found you was I was sitting there with my flair, my condition. I was like, dude, fuck. Like I have no direction until I was like, let me, let me figure out if I can find someone to just message them on Instagram or like YouTube, see if they've posted something recent. I was like, I, I put the drop down and I was like last two weeks, they posted last two weeks or last month. I was like, let me just get someone that's super recent. Let me like reach out to them. And then yours popped up. So I know there's other people that are probably going to be thinking the same thing. Um, and they're just looking for someone to message someone that's done it. So hopefully. Yeah. Well, I've done it a lot. I've done it. I mean, I've done it a lot. I've done it on myself. Yeah. I've got current clients like in the hundreds, thousands, you know, over the last six years. I mean, people have done remarkably well. And I'm just really happy that I'm able to give back in this way. Yeah, definitely. Um, and like I said, I'm going to probably give you the Instagram to put down. I actually like when people reach out to me, if especially if they're my age and they're trying to get into like bodybuilding at the same time having this condition, because that was like my only focus. I'm like, yeah. you have a hobby that like suddenly gets taken away from you. If anyone else is in that situation, it's hard. It's hard. You're like, 
you're yeah. like building this physique you're like doing all this and then um yeah so. you're like you're a fitness nut man that was uh that, <laughs> the difference that, yeah well you were very regimented and you really you really had that had everything dialed in when we spoke and so um i think that's really what what uh, led to your success i think that was that's it's very it definitely powerful. helped i'm actually thinking about doing a competition soon too i think um good you should uh, once i uh once i can uh, bulk up a little bit I'm yeah. trying to get, I'm trying to get to 170 at the same body weight that, or the same body percentage of body fat percentage that I'm at right now. Yeah. Um, but in order to do that, dude, I, I, I got to start <laughs> expanding my diet a little bit. Cause right now this diet's keeping me very lean, which is great, but I just, I just kind of want to bulk a little yeah, bit. Yeah. I think we can work on that. I think that's, definitely. that's what we got to work on anyway. So yeah. Yeah. So it'll uh definitely work. So yeah, hopefully if anyone ever wants yeah. to reach out to, <laughs> Well, hey, thank you so, so much. Uh, and I appreciate the updates. This is great. Getting a nice, like, real week eight update on somebody that's just been going through this. I think your story is going to help a lot of people. I think it's going to inspire a lot of people. And just seeing a real face of somebody that's that's really accomplished a lot in a short period of time with regards to inflammatory bowel, I think um, I think it's a good thing to see this. Yeah, dude, I, I hope it helps people. Um, like, I know how hard it is <laughs> yeah. to go through something like that so hopefully whoever whoever watches it gets even one person yeah you know uh can get through it um realize that just because uh I, I know you're a doctor but just because other people are doctors and they tell you that you know <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> that, yeah. that, just because <laughs> just because you hear from your doctor nothing can be done doesn't mean nothing can be done right so yeah exactly same goes to everything you know somebody says there's not a way to do it find a way to do it basically so yeah find a way yeah exactly. all right well we'll leave it on that man thank you all right man get it thanks for joining yeah. yeah no problem we'll talk soon we'll chat soon bye-bye so I hope you enjoyed that segment. If you made it to the end, and that was a long session with lots of helpful tips and helpful lessons, but if you made it to the end and you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you think this video will help someone you know, be sure to repost a link to this video. And as always, I'm Dr. Chanu Dasri with the Mind Gut Immunity Clinic, and I'll see you next time.